Mr. Golden, have you had enough time to speak to your attorneys about this decision to waive your right to your preliminary hearing? Yes. All right. Do you understand that the standard at a preliminary hearing is a much lower burden of proof that the government would have to meet than at trial? So instead of proof beyond a reasonable doubt, it's a lower burden of proof, which is, is there a reasonable belief that a crime was committed by you? And the court has to view all the evidence that it would receive in a light most favorable to the government, to the prosecution. Understanding that legal standard and having had discussions with your attorneys, do you hereby waive your right to your preliminary hearing? Yes. All right. The court finds that Mr. Galden has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to his preliminary hearing. He will be bound over for trial on all the charges set forth in the information, the charging document in this. NBA young boy may have one of the more impressive resumes when it comes to getting arrested. His current legal situation involves multiple layers of charges across state and federal jurisdictions, with the latest key development being his agreement to plead guilty to a federal weapons charge in Utah not. Just that, but Youngie has been under house arrest in Utah while awaiting trial in Louisiana. After facing over 60 felony counts related to a large-scale prescription fraud ring, if anyone around him is happy, it's most definitely going to be his lawyer since he seems to be unable to keep himself out of legal trouble. Kendall Jeden was born on October 20, 1999 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Jeden broke his neck while wrestling as a toddler, the injury requiring a head brace until the spine healed the brace left permanent scars on his forehead that are a part of his trademark look. Jeden was raised mainly by his maternal grandmother. Due to his father being sentenced to 55 years in prison, he dropped out of ninth grade and told his mom he wanted to focus on his music career and was soon arrested for robbery and sent to a detention center in Tallulah, Louisiana. There, he began writing lyrics for his debut project. After he was released from the detention center, Golden's grandmother died of heart failure and Jeden moved in with his friend and fellow Baton Rouge rapper NBA 33. The two then used acts of criminality to begin to pay for studio time. Golden first began producing music with a microphone he bought from Walmart when he was 14 years old. He released his first mixtape, Life Before Fame, in 2015. Golden announced his debut studio album, Until Death Call My Name, in January 2018. Shortly after signing a joint venture deal with Atlantic Records, it was here that his music career really started to take off, and he started making hits that made it on the Billboard Top 100 and being featured on other charts as well. Then, in September of 2020, he released his newest album, Top the Album, debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 and became his third number one album in. Under one year in 2015, Young Boy caught his first ever charge. This encounter with the law was the result of him having committed a robbery at only 15 years old. While some rap artists can blur the lines between life and art with their alleged criminal activity, fans can draw a straight line between his first arrest and his introduction to rap while jailed in Tula, Louisiana. On this charge, young boy put pen to pad and founded a rap career based off of his troubled life. These early musings would become the basis for what is now his well-known 2015 debut mixtape, Life Be Fame. Young boy spoke of the time during an interview with a fader in humble terms saying I had been rapping. But I used to hide it after the six-month period of change and self-discovery. A criminal court judge opted in favor of NBA's release, allowing him to continue into young adulthood with his freedom intact, or at least that was the intention because he had a long road ahead of him that would be fraught with troubles with the law, usually with crimes involving younger people. There is a clear escalation from one act to the next, but not with this young rapper NBA young boy was arrested at a concert at which he was scheduled to perform on November 28, 2016. The arrest in Austin, Texas, arose over law enforcement's belief that young boy wildly fired guns into a crowd via drive-by just weeks prior in Baton Rouge. The arrest occurred at an exceptionally unfortunate time for young boy who had just turned 17 and was thus eligible to be tried as an adult. Prosecutors were able to paint a vivid picture of possible punishments enough to overcome young boy's recalcitrant mindset as he not only paid a post-conviction bail of $50,000, but also accepted a deal to plead guilty and complied with officers in exchange for a less severe prison sentence, having been charged with two counts of attempted first-degree murder. 
young boy got off with a steal of only nine months behind bars and three years of probation, a slap on the wrist compared to the maximum of 40 years imprisonment he could have received under Texas state law. The prosecutor reasoning is not fully known at a public scale, so it is undetermined if how much NB young boy helped prosecutors by providing information on two of the other alleged shooters in the drive-by despite the groundbreaking success of tracks like Untouchable. NBA Youngboy was arrested on a fugitive warrant for having sought to evade arrest on charges of weapons possession, kidnapping, and assault. The latter two charges pertained in part to an incident recorded in a hotel hallway, which depicts Youngboy physically abing his girlfriend Johnia Jackson, then dragging her into a hotel room. NBA Youngboy only remained in jail for one month until he paid his $75,000 bond he took to social media when the video was first published saying the two were only playing. But the public discourse on the matter remains divided after 2019. It honestly felt that NBA young boy had taken the hint and gotten himself back on the straight and narrow, and that would appear to have been the case until September of 2020 when police did a contraband check on him and he got busted. NBA caught at least three drug and gun charges, reportedly including felony possession of drugs and possession of a stolen firearm. His arrest took place alongside 15 others after police responded to a call regarding individuals displaying firearms and recording a video Baton Rouge police claimed the suspects arrested were never broke again, gang members and bottom boy guerrillas members as well at the scene officers discovered numerous firearms including an AK-47 in addition to hydrocodone marijuana digital scales and Xanax. Furthermore, NBA young boy alone was found to be possession of $47,000 in cash. At the time of the arrest, young boy's lawyer was swift to take up a rigorous defense of his client, stating, We still have the Second Amendment in the United States. The immediate detention of these black men was illegal and that it violated their constitutional rights. The subsequent searches conducted by law enforcement were also illegal, even with the illegal searches that were conducted. No. Firearms or controlled dangerous substances were found on Mr. Gon's person. Or in his immediate control, Mr. Jeden is innocent of the charges. He was booked on last night and looks forward to defending himself as such. In his latest legal troubles, a Baton Rouge judge ordered NBA young boy into federal custody Thursday after he was arrested Tuesday in Utah. Accused of participating in a large-scale prescription fraud, Ring young boy was already out on bond as he Based weapon charges in Baton Rouge U.S. District Court Judge Shelley D. urged that bond be revoked. Young boy has been on house arrest in Utah. He was arrested and booked into the Cache County Jail on more than 60 felony counts. Investigators believe the chart top rapper was involved in a scheme of fraudulently obtaining the prescription drugs promethazine and codine from several pharmacies in Utah. At least two others have been arrested, and as many as eight others may have been involved in the organized operation. According to a Cache County Sheriff arrest affidavit, the crew allegedly called multiple pharmacies pretending to be real doctors in the area using their legitimate drug enforcement agency identification numbers and calling in prescriptions. Some were filled, but others were flagged as fraudulent officials said this continues to show a pattern consistent with an organizational structure, an investigator wrote, as authorities investigated Gwendolyn Cox, who said she was a 75-year-old woman, contacted Cache County Dispatch and asked to speak with an officer. Authorities believe this same name was used to fill some of the fraudulent prescriptions during the conversation with Gwendolyn. It was very clear that a fake voice was being